Welcome. The norovirus to the future of women's reproductive rights has been keeping us all up all night. Here to tell us whether that's anxiety or insomnia or both, and to weigh in on all the hottest health topics is ABC News Chief Medical Correspondent Dr. Jen Ashton. <laughs> Welcome. It's both. It's, it's both. both. Sure. <laughs> I know. It's making everybody crazy. So the Alabama Supreme Court recently ruled that embryos are children, okay, uh, which sparked a national backlash and jeopardized IVF uh, and reproductive rights all over the place. Uh, yesterday, the state's House and Senate did pass bills intending to protect IVF in Alabama. But as a board-certified OBGYN yourself, how disturbing do you find all this, and what implications does it have for women's health care in general? Obviously, it has big implications, right? I mean, whatever side you're on, you can agree with that. I think that first, in medicine, which there seems to be a lack of medical credentialed voices in mm -hmm. this debate, patient autonomy is one of the founding principles of biomedical ethics. So I want to be crystal clear. As a practicing physician, I respect an individual's opinion and right for whatever they believe unchallenged full stop. If you look at science, however, science and medicine, what is transferred during that IVF procedure is called a blastocyst. That's a big word for a ball of about 200 cells. When it is transferred into the uterus, there is no guarantee that those cells will continue to divide. There is no guarantee that that cell ball will attach to the wall of the uterus. There is no guarantee that it will implant. And there is no guarantee that a heartbeat will develop. So I think we need to stick with the science and the medical facts when we talk about issues like that and understand that what's referred to as a, a child, a fetus, an embryo in the lay public actually is, is inaccurate and incorrect because when you, you talk about said, medicine. Because I think people don't understand that people trying to go through fertility treatments usually try to make as many of these embryos as possible because yeah. you don't know which of them is going to be viable. That's you don't know correct. which of them is going to attach. Correct. So then you, you're left with a question, what to do with the ones that are left if and when? Right, and in the world of assisted reproductive technology, there's a saying, and this is fact, an embryo does not necessarily equate to a live birth. That is the reality. It does, does not equate to a live birth, but an embryo or a heartbeat. Is, is not necessarily going to become a puppy, right? An embryo is going to be, if it's... No, not embryo. going if it's, if to be. That's the point. No, no, if it's implanted, no, nope, if it continues not a to grow But that's a lot of ifs. There are many steps Does it, does it we... become a child? If, 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 all if, those if, if, and there yes. are many, many steps along the, that process. Right. So, you know, you can, every person is absolutely within their right to say, when I first conceive of having a child mentally in my mind, that's the moment that, that, I respect that. And that's their opinion. But in medicine and science, right. that ball of cells is not guaranteed for any of the steps that And follow. also, don't they free, they freeze these things, right? These they can either be they fresh freeze or them. So you could not yes. freeze a human being. It would die. Well, well but the other thing yeah, is, let's, let's yes. say you have a right? miscarriage at two months. Mm -hmm. Have you miscarried just a bunch of cells or have you miscarried a baby? It's definitely not a baby. That's an incorrect term, and it's also not a fetus. It's it, it is. But a woman feel when some women where, may feel that, that way. That's right? where we have to distinguish between medicine and facts mm -hmm. and science and and what you or you or you or any patient, any woman, any couple believes. Right. They and and we can't try to make them the same thing. Uh -huh. So I think that you know people who legislate should stay in their lane. And people who go to school for four years and then do eight, 12, 10 years of professional training after that, who have initials after their name in medicine and science, should handle the medical you're, and science. Are you and kidding? More than a senator or a congressperson? <laughs> or, or, or maybe, or even better yet, maybe the government just stays out of those decisions. That would be so nice if the government right. were out of my uterus. That would be very nice. All right. <laughs> Let me ask you this, um, Jen. We've been talking about Wendy Williams um, and the new docu-series putting a spotlight on um, what appear to be pretty severe health issues. Um, her care team recently revealed that she's suffering from progressive aphasia and mm -hmm. frontotemporal dementia. Yeah. 
Um, can you explain what those conditions are? Because I think a lot of folks, yeah. are, they're not that common. And what treatment exists at this point? So those are different neurologic terms for an impairment basically in our ability to communicate. Mm -hmm. um, aphasia refers to the term we use in neurology for inability to say words and to speak. Mm -hmm. oh. And frontotemporal dementia has to do with the part of our brain that's really essential for understanding language, mm -hmm. processing that language, mm -hmm. and then communicating that language. Mm -hmm. And so there are kind of two different things that lead to a similar outcome, which is an impaired or absent or difficulty communicating. Um, but also the frontal lobe is also responsible for our behavior. So people as we age all get a little bit of frontal lobe impairment mm -hmm. with age. Um, but when you have a severe problem in that part of the brain, mm -hmm. your behavior can really be erratic. Mm -hmm. um, and the treatment to your, yeah, to your the question part. is really hard because there is no cure for this. There's no good mm. treatment for it. The management is difficult. But what I think stories like this bring awareness to is it's not only a problem for that person, it's a problem for the caregivers yep. that have to support But can I just person. ask you this? Uh, uh, um, she's seen drinking alcohol throughout, and um, her son says that it's alcohol-induced dementia. So generally speaking, can alcohol impact aphasia or cause dementia? Uh, alcohol is not good for the brain. That's conclusively known. And, and a lot of things can cause both of these neurologic conditions, head trauma, brain tumors, substance abuse. Mm. So again, So how it's... many margaritas are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I need a little bit more specific. I don't, I don't think you're there. <laughs> Dr. Jen, I want to ask you about the neurovirus. It seems like everyone oh. in New York is sick right now. My husband had it. I it's, got that. It's going around. Yeah, it's um, hellish. Right. What do we need to know? How do we protect ourselves? And I had, I had <gasps> read that hand sanitizer is actually not the best way to deal with it. It doesn't. The alcohol-based hand sanitizers, which are great for respiratory viruses and, and people on the run, mm -hmm. preschools, little kids, et cetera, et cetera. Not great for penetrating the viral um, envelope of the norovirus. This mm. is the most common cause of viral GI flu, so oh. to speak, in this country. I've had it. I'm sure we've all had it's it awful. once in our life. It is the worst. You don't come out of the bathroom for 24 hours. It's not the way we want to drop 48. a few pounds, yeah. right? Um, and the way, what's really, really important, if someone at your, in your home, or worse, at your job has this, they remain contagious for a couple of days after their wow. symptoms go away. Oh. They should be isolated. Like, <laughs> it's a different part of, you know, don't go in there. Sanitize all towels, bedding, Ooh. wash your hands, all those touch points. Wash your hands. We say it so often. It's yeah. not sexy, but it does work. Okay. Wow. Well, um, President Biden um, completed his annual physical yeah. this week. Uh, is there anything new or surprising that came out in this report? And in your medical opinion, how does he compare to other 81-year-old men? I think, in my medical opinion, first of all, how does he compare to a 54-year-old woman? I couldn't do that job yeah. uh, right? Yeah. Uh, of being president. Um, there were some glaring omissions in that physical report. It was about seven pages. Uh, we all got a copy of it um, from the president's physician. We do what's called a review of systems anytime we do a physical exam on someone. That includes includes not only just general neurologic evaluation, but a mental evaluation, a screening for depression or psychiatric mm -hmm. illness, mental illness, anxiety, not in there. Um, mm -hmm. Cognitive exam, not in there. Mm -hmm. Genitourinary exam, prostate exam, not in there. We can all uh, So you what know, did they check on him? Why? Yeah. Well, they, it was... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was comprehensive <laughs> in his doctor's opinion, yeah. but what was released to the public, oh. if you're a healthcare professional, professional, you know what things uh, have not been yeah. in there, you know, so again. So maybe they were done but not released? I would like to think that they were probably done but not released, yes. Mm. The question is, can he do the job? And it looks like he can. I am not his physician, right. but, you know, again, I, he does have a qualified physician and it was a thorough report, but some things missing. Because, uh, you know, when Trump got the um, physician, that doctor, what's his <laughs> name? Alice, or, no, that was Jackson. Jackson, what was, was his name? He said like he was the, a, the best human You know what, Joy, Joy, I'm waiting for the day that the President of the United States has a physician who happens to be a woman. Uh, yeah. Let's, yeah. let's have yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs>
Let's see how that day will be when the United States happens to have a president who is a woman. That's right. Well, thank you. Let them find out how a prostate exam feels when they want. <laughs> <laughs> thanks to Dr. Jen Ashton. You can catch her weekdays on GMA3 right here on ABC. And be sure to pick up the latest issue of Dr. Jen's magazine wherever magazines are sold.